This table is horrible. Smell that drawer. I just shit on his table. Because it's a cross. shit table. I mean, I this get is a it great now. Table. Yeah. And they say, all right, welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Terrible Table Podcast. I've got Garrett Nelson in the house. Hello. He, he hello. is a uh, a local uh, up and coming new Shreveport comedian that uh, one of the the I guess uh, how do you call it the uh, senior comedian spoke yeah. very highly of you recently. It and, feels good. Uh, yeah, it feels no. fucking awesome. So, but uh, we're gonna sit down and talk with him today, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. So, you were asking me a question that as we were getting started, and I said, "Fuck it, let's just get started." Yeah. And you asked me if I missed being a kid. Yeah, dude. It's no. pretty. Why? No. Why? It's such a good magical moment. Like, I mean, don't live in the past, obviously, but you can go appreciate what happened. It's hell being a kid. As an adult, I have a lot of understanding. Okay. As a kid, I didn't. And there's times like, maybe it was the way that I was parented, but I know a lot of parents, a lot of adults, especially when I was growing up, they didn't, um, they didn't really explain things just to, to you. They just said, no, you can't do that, you know, or you're in trouble for, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, I know. They, I hate that shit. There dude. wasn't any, like, explanation as to why. So there's a lot of, like, wonder and I don't, that's one thing. I mean, I miss the not having bills and, you know, being able to run and play with my friends and yeah, not yeah. having like true responsibilities yeah, because yeah. somebody else was keeping me alive. Um, but no, I don't miss being a kid at all. I wouldn't want to go back. Look, I, here's how I feel about it, right? Like uh, every day, I'm only 23, right? So like someone say I'm a baby, someone say I'm an adult. I think I'm just a guy uh, who likes to make people laugh. <laughs> But, like, as a, I think about, you know, the times that I had in elementary school and shit, even high school, I'm like, damn, dude. Like, if I could go back to that first moment for just once more. Like, the first time I, uh, I, the first time I thought I was in love, I kissed this girl named Lindsay Brumfield. Because we were, Lindsay? Yeah, dude. I, no, nah, I love that chick. She's, oh, boy. So, like, I kissed her and I ran off to home to go to school. And it was the last uh, day of the school year. And, like, I looked at her and she looked at me and she, like, smiled and tried to hide a smile and i didn't realize until recently when i broke up with my ex i was like that is true love that's what that is dude that sweet first feeling that you get and that's what i miss about being a kid nope not even a little i don't blame you yeah fuck that i mean i'm 42 so <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm you know in in my eyes i could definitely see how like being like starting to get into responsibility at 23 years old, you know, fitting for yourself, you know, blah, 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 having to figure this and that out. I could definitely see, you know, longing for, you know, the past as far as like your childhood. But man, I've, I've you know, people ask that stupid ass question of, you know, if you could start, if you could go back to, <laughs> you know, freshman year in high school, uh, knowing, <laughs> knowing what you know now, what, you know, would you do it? And it's, I wouldn't do that either. You wouldn't do it differently? No, I would I would definitely do things different yeah. if I could go back. But the problem is is I have a I have three children that I absolutely adore and there's no way that I would want to go back and not be able to have that exact outcome. Because I want these three I want my three kids. I yeah. love them. They're my kids. So the only way that I'd be able to go back and do anything different is if you were able to delete the memories of my kids and I would never sign up for the memory of my children to be deleted. Yeah, that's not cool. You know what dude. I mean? So, and that's what, like, I, I hear that question. It's like, man, no, I would just keep going where I'm at now. You know, like I've, I've learned enough and I'm doing okay. You know, I'm, I got all my limbs and, you know, I'm You're still, I'm still married. My kids are happy and healthy. You know what I mean? We, we pay our bills. So I'm, I'm okay. You know, I'm not, you know, way up here, but I'm not as bad as it could be, you know? You live so, in that, like, sweet life so that you're proud of. So, fuck going back, you know, knowing what I know now, fuck that, because I know my kids. Of course. So, of course. yeah, if I didn't have kids, you know, I think that'd be a different answer. Absolutely. Because then you just go back and, you know, you know, my freshman year, I'd go back and invest in Bitcoin, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Knowing what I know now, I'd like, dude, just that's, that's cheat easy the money, bro. Yeah, cheat the system, fuck off, do whatever I want, and then as soon as Bitcoin comes on the scene... Take every dollar that I have and put it in there. And if it's 600 bucks, that's fine. It's going to go to $35,000 a share in a few years. Just survive. Dude, you know, you, you know, all right, look, I, I wouldn't do a lot if I had a lot of money like a lot of people. 
I would want to do one thing just to feel how like much of a boss you could do. I'd want to take like a wad of money, and if someone's like being stupid or like just saying foolish shit, I just want to slap the fuck out of them. That'd be fun. <sighs> that sounds fantastic, dude. The Shut up that, and just yeah. give it to like throw it at them yeah. as you slap them, and it's nothing to you. Here's twenty thousand dollars. Shut the fuck like, up. Just smack the fuck out of them. That'd be good. It's just a power play. That's all. Yeah. All right, so let's get to know you a little bit because I don't really know you that well. I've, you know, we've done some open mics together, so mm-hmm. this is kind of my first introduction with you. Uh, are you from here? No, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. I've, uh, I've actually been around a lot. I've been to, here we go, uh, Missouri, Kansas, Illinois, Louisiana, Indiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Puerto Rico. Military brat? Nah. No? Nah, I just, my parents like to go places, and I like to go places. And the casino business is actually very, very... Uh, fruitful for going different places because everyone uh, loves to gamble. Yeah, everyone. And there's loves casinos gamble. all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just, I've learned a lot from a lot of different people, um, and I would say I'm very, very proud to be well traveled. Not like super well traveled, but you know. Yeah. How long y'all been here? Let's see, I turned 21 here, so two years. Two years. Two years, almost three. Almost three. Yeah, this place is crazy. <laughs> this place is wild, dude. Oh! For so little people, it is kind of bananas. I know. It's a big little city is what I say. Because you always run into something. Like, I know me being here mm-hmm. my whole life. I run into, there. Uh, there's nobody that I can't no. separate from. Like, it's, no. you know, it doesn't matter who it is. If you talk to somebody, you're going to have that probably four degrees, not even six of separation from pretty much everybody mm-hmm. in town. It's and so it's, crazy. I'm not used to that. I'm not yeah, used to that crazy. at all. Like, you know, hypothetically, let's say that, uh, you know, you you meet someone, you really get to know someone, woo 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 y'all don't see each other, and then, like, three months down the line, it's like, didn't I? You know, like, yeah. I, I've seen you, maybe not your face, but I was, <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, you know, and not that side of it, but the other day, uh, when I got my beard trimmed and mm-hmm. uh, cleaned up, uh, the barber, my barber knows you. Yeah, dude, yeah. I've been to that I'm man's fans, house. I'm Yo, a fans. Yeah. I love, love, love Tristan. He's good people. Yeah. I actually play, I go to a store called Gamers XP. Okay. And I, I play know Magic the Gathering. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a nerd, so I don't. No, so no, don't it's okay. I play. I know what it is. Dungeons and Dragons. Let's yeah. go with that one instead. I, I'm not a nerd either, but I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. I used yeah. to paint, when I was a kid, I used to paint the figurines for my brother. That's just awesome, dude. Yeah, he had a bunch of like metal ones, dragons, four or five headed dragons and mm-hmm. shit. I used to paint all of his soldiers and blah blah blah. Was, that's the kind of shit that I enjoyed. I was it was the eighties. There wasn't much to do. Three, <laughs> six, and twelve was our only channel. No, you're good. You're yeah. good. So, but you play magic, mm-hmm. and that's how you met Tristan. Yeah, yeah. And uh, me and him got real close. And you know, Tristan, he's a great barber. He is, but he's like, dude, I don't know how to cut. Like, you know, like your ethnicity of hair and i was like look Pam, I, look i have a show friday this is uh the jeremy unmasked for a show yeah the one coming up mm, right. or did y'all no, already do it it's an it's a it was an older one it was actually my first like time getting booked and oh I, that was yeah. okay so that was uh-huh. the one that was like two weeks ago mm-hmm. okay i thought that is there another show coming up that you're uh, on no i'm still if i'm honest with you i know i can do so much better but i really want to focus and get my material down because yeah. i'm Clyde Williams is my mentor. Right. One out of three of them. Yeah, he was the one that was talking very highly. Of yeah, dude, I love that guy. That guy is like... He, he's great. Dude, he... He's silly, but he's great. You don't even, like, realize until it's too late. You know, like, yeah. I, I, I was like, all right, no, I'm not going to laugh at any of Clyde's jokes. I'm just going to, ex- like, just watch like a hawk, like a student. And I didn't last, like, two jokes, dude. Like, I cough up my water. I was like, I fucking hate this he's guy. He's good. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, y'all do dungeon. How often y'all do D and D? Um, I do the one or every, magic even. Oh, magic's every day. That's on site. Oh dude. shit, my bad. Yeah, it, that's every day for life. Man, if bro. I if I took you to my buddy's house, you'd be like, ah, oh, mm-hmm. he's got more magic cards than like I be, I bet he has more magic cards than any store around here. That's totally a possibility. Yeah, I I bet you. He, and he's mm. got like I know at one point in time he was like putting them all in sets. Oh, the fun part, the yeah, organizing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's got so many. Oh, and now his new thing is disc golf. I mean, I'm telling you, if you yeah. go, if you go to his house, it looks like, you know, it looks like a storefront for either disc golf or Magic. <laughs> storefront. There, there yeah. are there are fucking cards and discs everywhere. I bet he's got. I wonder how many are on each shelf, but I mean, if there's at least ten on each shelf, I bet he's got two hundred 
disc over there for disc golf. Dude, you got me on the store for when I go out of I was <laughs> cracking up about <laughs> That's that. That's what it looks like. Yeah. He just needs price tags on everything. Yeah, dude. So, you know, uh, David Allen mm-hmm. uh, wanted me to do a Dungeons & Dragons episode at, with this table. You should, you know, oh, because you should. this table's so massive and you can put so many people It's such it. a good table. Yeah, and that's it's why like, we call this place, the, uh, this podcast, the Terrible Table. Oh, yeah. So you hit like one, two, three. Everyone has room for dice and they're comfortable. Then yeah. you have like Dungeon Master where you're sitting. Like this would be a great D&D table. Yeah, I know I'm nerding a out. Lot of, a lot of people have said that. That's how you know. It's so, like, oh, yeah. I, all I got to do is put a like downward facing mm-hmm. camera so that way you get the whole table as well. Oh, totally. Yeah, we've talked about doing it and like. He was like, man, I'll get you to play. And I was like, man, I'm just going to shit on it the whole time because it's always been like a nerdy thing in mm-hmm. my group of people. Um, I've got a few friends that play it, but we've always fucked with them and told them, ah, oh, you fucking nerd, you play yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. You know, just busting balls. Yeah, I've yeah. never played it, so I really have no, no idea how much fun it could be. Um, my son played it once, and he enjoyed it. But if I was to do a podcast with it, I'd just be – talking shit that's the best part that's what he said it's and the, we never did it we, we need it we might need to do it one day look look so i i play like pretty basic characters right like i played a, I tried to emulate sun goku you know like the mythology goku from dragon ball z no, i'm Oh, dude. 42, you, buddy. You busted my balls, 42, man. 42, buddy. Okay, look, look, look. So it's just... It's, a, it's not it's, Looney Tunes. <laughs> or, you know, it's like this monkey, monkey man martial artist who has a staff that expands and then, you know, goes in. And so I'm playing something like him and he's a drunkard. And so I'm, I'm beating up these goblins and stuff while doing twips and twirls and doing on my tippy toes while I spin my feet in the air. And I usually piss off my DM and he killed me on purpose. And yeah, I don't... <laughs> I don't blame him, but it it make there's so much you can do. Like, I told my one team was like, "All right, guys, get in the car. We're gonna go fight space dinosaurs." Yeah, that's the kind of thing that you can do. With Absolutely, D&D. it's all. It does not matter. It doesn't it's all matter. up to you and your imagination. Yes. And yes. What you're willing to. Yes. All right. It shit's crazy. Yeah. It's never, never played it. I've never even seen it played. Like other out, than yeah. like TV, like you know, I've wa- I've watched Big Bang Theory and mm-hmm. seen, so I know the kind of idea behind it. But I've never, never walked in on people playing it, and you know, you just walk in on like sixties, yeah. like, like what? You just, yeah, oh, you just really? is that an awkward well, walk in? Might hey. as well be sucking each other's dicks, basically. <laughs> so, all right, well, let, how, let me ask you this: How, uh, like, what, what got have you? Did you do comedy anywhere else other than here? And what, no. like, what made you decide to start? Like. Um, turning 21 going to the bar or what was it no some people have told me i'm funny and i didn't ever i never really thought i was funny and then i you know i saw um well okay so here's another one here's one of the, my uh, mentors as well uh glenn stewart i saw glenn stewart glenn's a piece of shit dude what <laughs> you ought to check out the podcast that yeah. he did it's called my podcast his man cave yeah yeah it's a total pile of garbage i know man. that co-host he had that fat what fuck. a jackass <laughs> oh Oh my God! I couldn't make it through one episode. Uh, I tried multiple times, and it's just oh, oh. So he's one of my mentors. Uh, so it's the judge, jury, and executioner is what I like to call them. Um, Glenn is totally the executioner, and I saw him do stand up. I was like, I could do it. And then I watched myself mess up for like five minutes, and I was like, Ugh, that was horrible. That was a little hard. Everyone was lying to me. Yeah. And then I started getting like, what do you call it? Petty. I was like. I'm going to make people laugh at me just to spite Glenn. And you know what? I did. And out of that spite came like this love because it saved my life. I'm honest with you. I went through a dark, dark time in my life. And the thing that like was like, you know what? This is okay. I should keep doing this was comedy. Yeah. Totally. Nice. Absolutely. Well, I hate that you had a, a you know, a, a, a deep, you know, period in your life that you had to, you know, find something to overcome with, but that's, I'm glad you found comedy. That's character development, dude. Amen to that. Yeah. Dude, yeah. No, I'll give you that. Yeah. Now Glenn is a, Glenn's a, Glenn's a pile of shit. He's never going to listen to this. He didn't even <laughs> listen to the one we did. Fucking that's crazy. Fucking. Yeah. Hey, I don't even think he's subscribed to the other, tra- you know what I mean? I'm going to force him to watch it. No, he won't do it. I'll He'll say something <laughs> with his raspy voice hey. and his country twang. <laughs> And his bad attitude. And he'll twirl his hair. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a color. And he'll say something about fuck trophies. <laughs> and it'll be a Glenn thing. I hate uh, how accurate like that sounds, yeah. too. That's, what I'm not, was, that's not a, I don't think it's a really good one, no, but it's, it's not bad. That's not bad. That's yeah. a, I know. like Glenn, though. 
So <laughs> and like so when it comes to comedy, like I mean, I'm I'm fresh to all this shit too, uh, but you're like super duper fresh to it. Oh yeah, like you are way well, behind the ears. Like well, not like what two three months, four months, five months, six, six. months, six months. Yeah, I love how you two three four five. Well, I was thinking I said two three at <laughs> yeah. first, and I was like, wait a minute, that's not right because I've seen maybe him. seven. But I and then I you know kind of remembered about when I was trying to stick my head back in the scene because I started in 2018 and then my dad had some health problems and I stopped. I stopped podcasting. I stopped trying to do comedy. All of it had to be an adult. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. I had, to, had to help out. And unfortunately, right now, my dad's back in the hospital. So, all right, well, you know, yeah, no, nah, well, you know, we'll see what happens. Today was a good day. Uh, he actually he said more to me today than he has in two weeks. Yeah, that's good. So today was a know, good day. Today was a good day, and uh, he confirmed uh, some of the the questions that i've answered that i have answered them correctly yeah uh, okay. so that was that was good but you know one day at a time see what happens hopefully you know i, th- I think his life has changed uh forever but i just don't know if that's you know how bad that is but you know he's gonna be he's gonna be the way he's supposed to be so and that you know and it it does it affects like you know it affects you know it definitely affects the comedy because oh, you don't sure. really feel like being funny. It's tiring, you know. Yeah, especially when you're hanging out. You know, my dad had a stroke. Just to say it. Uh, no, you're good. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. Uh, and it's you know you fucking sit up there for you know an hour or so and hang out and he's just there. Yeah. You know, what I mean, you don't really feel like going. Like I did try to write a joke that you know my dad's getting old. He's got all. He's got dementia. And, uh, you know, I go by there in the mornings and he likes to feed the birds. But because he's got dementia, he started throwing weird shit. Mm-hmm. Like I showed up the other day and he was throwing drywall screws out, <laughs> the, yeah. out in the driveway. And, you know, he's throwing change at the birds, you know, and they're like, we, we can't eat this. <laughs> he's like, why aren't they coming back? <laughs> you know, so I don't think they close well through birds, dude. I'm, yeah, so I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out a way to be joking about it. Yeah. Uh, but it is it's definitely difficult so what i can tell you with epilepsy uh is that like when i when i was 18 it was right after my 18th birthday like i remember i had a headache for like a week and then i ate a burrito one day and i looked at my mom and i was like and then i ate another bite and i just remember like waking up in the hospital no shit yeah dude it was intense and dude my life just went like like i wasn't able to get in the military i was so depressed and then i started like making fun of it uh, what really sent it is I had a uh, I had a seizure like it was pretty intense right after, basically during having sex. Oh wow! Yeah, so I mean like that shit was good. Oh, it was a little dude, yeah. yeah, wow, <laughs> KP. Yeah, dude, yeah, uh-huh. dude. Uh, so I can knock down what it was, and uh, she was worried. I thought the shit was funny. I was like, damn, baby, you laid it on me for real, for real. Like, <laughs> yeah, you damn near killed me. <laughs> oh shit! So, so I just learned how to you know see you tomorrow night. So. Yeah, for real, bro. I'm talking about the girl. Like, that's what I would say to the girl. So I'll see oh. you again tomorrow. We'll yeah, see yeah. if you can kill me this time. Yeah, for real. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's keep doing this for a while. There's a second day. <laughs> so what, like, it, I'm not very, I'm not familiar with epilepsy. No, like, what it. what triggers it, like, it, with you in particular? You said you're a gamer. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess, are you a video gamer? I'm a, yeah, I'm a, okay. <laughs> I play games. I do well, partake. I just, you know, I, you know. No, you're good. Yeah, you may have been meaning, you know. Magic the Gathering and no, no, I get you. Just uh, and, Dragons. and I know, like, video games have the tendency apparently to like bring that out of people. I guess it's the frames it's per the second visuals. or whatever. It's uh, it's the it's like how intense things are happening. Like, there's particles and then explosions. You know, there's a fire, or just whatever random stuff. And uh, it actually is not that. What it is is uh, it's too much stress, not enough uh, food, and not enough sleep, and too much alcohol. Uh-huh. So I have to be careful because I, I don't sleep already as is because I want to stay up playing games or talking to my friends or do some other BS. You afraid you gonna miss something? Yeah, dude, yeah. there's some wild stuff Been that happens there. in chats. Yeah. You know, Been like, there. yeah. So uh, it's it's manageable, but it it takes a toll. You know, I have to miss out on stuff. I'm I'm actually afraid, and I told this story. I told this joke that to take a shower by myself, I <laughs> I take baths and. Uh, you know, I could yeah, slip no, and fuck yeah. around and find out. Yeah. And some lady called me Bath Boy, and so now I have that nickname. I now. remember. Mm-hmm. I vaguely remember that. That happened up at Tiki, right? Yep. Yeah. So now I am known uh, as Bath Boy. Can you, are you able to drive? I can drive. I can drive. I do not drive because I should not drive. Uh, because, because of it? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Also, it's like, it's, I don't know. I would feel terrible about myself if I hurt someone, you know. 
while I was driving. Like realistically, if I have to, I I will do what I must do to, in order to help my family. If I have to drive someone to the hospital or whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But like, it's not something unnecessary. That I, yeah. When when this could potentially lead to yeah yeah not just fatal for you but for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Um, do the stage lights ever fuck with it? You ever worry about that? No, it's not lighting. Trust me. I've, okay. No, I, again, yeah. that's my ignorance coming out. No, you're cool. You're you know, good. I, and that's why I was, you know, like if you're stressed and, you know, you've been drinking a little bit before you get on stage and I know what my nerves do when mm-hmm. I go to get on stage. I'm nervous. No, nah, dude, I just smoke a little bit of herb and, you know, I actually, believe it or not, I like to do Tai Chi. Uh, that helps. That helps me work out and it helps me sleep. I'm not really good at it. I'm not good at it at all, but I can tell you what, it's, it keeps my body limber. Um I'm fucking tall. My back hurts. <laughs> I'm short, and fat. My back hurts too. Uh, yeah, you know, up here, brother, with me. Uh, That's right. So it, it helps, and I, it relaxes my mind uh, very, very well. So I go up there, you know, a little cooked. Go up there, and I. You ever get nervous going on stage? Oh, every time, all every the time. time. I wasn't sure. I was talking to Mark, and he said that his nerves really, his nerves hit him when he's trying to talk to people, like. Yeah, and like approach people and talk to them, but on stage it doesn't. Where mine is the exact opposite. On stage, I get nervous approaching and talking to people. That's nothing. It's so easy to talk to people. It's so, so fucking easy. easy to my talk. kids, my kids and my wife get mad at me all mm-hmm. the time because I say that, and they're like, "No, it's not." I'm like, "Yeah, it is." You know, it, it's just hello. It's, how yeah, are hey, you? What's up, man? How are you? I like your shirt. Yeah, you. I mean, you don't yeah. even have to say that. You can say, "Hey, what's up? How's it yeah, going?" Dude. Yeah, dude. And if they respond back to you, then they're interested in the conversation. Right. You know what I mean? If they're just like, "Yo." Yeah, you know, give you that re- up, read no. the room. You know what I mean, but it ain't hard to talk to. That people. nod system is real, dude. That shit is perfect. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. My know. wife, uh, I've said it before, but my wife used to take me. She used to be uh, in the Louisiana Restaurant Association. Okay, and uh, she used to take me to her, the, the LRA meetings. So that way, if there was somebody she didn't know and she needed to talk to him, she'd send me over to talk mm-hmm. to him, and then I would introduce my wife. I do that. I do that a lot. <laughs> Excuse me. No, you're good. I I used to do that in Baton Rouge with. These two lovely individuals named Tabby and uh, Sage. Uh, it, mind you, again, I'm... I'm Tabby and Sage. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I'm just painting a picture. No, no, you're good. You're good. Um, so, like, they're very, very short and scared white women, right? Great ladies. They're just It's just who they are. And so, be great, Garrett. And they send me, like, hey, she needs some gas. We're at pump six. <laughs> like, you know, simple shit like that. Like... It's I'm I'm noticing that it's becoming more of a phenomenon now, and it's it's really it's kind of concerning because people don't know how to interact with each other, and yeah. that's bothersome. You know, like we are social creatures. You do you will have to talk to someone. You might as well get good at it. Yeah, and you're gonna be awkward at it in the beginning. Oh yeah, and you'll be good at it with your friends, and you're like, oh, I can't I make it translate? It's because you're uncomfortable. Yeah, you're nervous. I mean, and it's just like when me and Mark were talking about it. It's when the more I thought about it, the more I thought about it. I actually texted him later that night, and I was like, you know, you know, we had talked about it on stage that you know I get ner- or I get nervous on stage. We had talked about it on the podcast mm-hmm. that I get nervous on stage, but not talking to people. And you know, how can I figure out how to translate that over, like to the comedy? What you missing? <laughs> I was like, oh, water bottle. How can I figure out how to translate that over to the comedy? And I kept thinking about it, like it stuck with me all night, and. Uh, I kind of put it in a like the same the same idea that I have about when people have a problem like talking to girls in particular. Mm-hmm. You know, oh man, I can't talk to girls. You know, I can't I can't approach a girl and talk to her. And it's like, hey man, it's not that it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, it is. Well, I noticed when I was in high school, I could say anything I wanted to to the black girls, <laughs> but I got nervous whenever I was talking to the white girls. And honestly, it was because I was trying to fuck the white girls, yeah. but I wasn't trying to fuck the black girls. So you were cool. You were chilling. I wasn't nervous. There was no sexual like eh, Tension. nervousness there from me. And I was able to be free and funny. And I guarantee could have fucked everyone in black girls. You know what I'm saying? Because they loved me. You know what I'm saying? But that was never like an idea in my mind. It was just we were we were cool and I was just talking shit. Yeah, you were just hanging out. And it was it was that realization that helped me like you know, be able to not be a nervous because I was I've always been a big guy and, you know, big guys can be self-conscious and nervous about talking to people. And it helped me like figure out how to navigate, you know, how to talk to women. And it's the same thing with comedy. I have to I'm going up on stage. Like. Trying to talk to the white girl that I want to fuck 
when I need to go up on stage and talk to the black girl that I have no problem with. Right, right. Basically, I need to not worry about trying to make you laugh. I'm trying to make you laugh when I get on stage, and I realize that, and that's what gets in my head. And I need to just go up there and just talk like I'm good at doing to people and just pretend it's people. I'm not trying to make you laugh. It's just going to happen. Well, I, and I got to figure out how to do that, and I still haven't. It's not that hard. I mean, yeah, it's hard, but here's my you know point of view, right? There are at any given moment three people who I'm trying to make like really, really laugh. And, you know, if I get laughs from everyone else, I, like that feels good. You know, that's nice. And then once I get the laugh, it's like this, um, it's like momentum or it's like a tempo thing. So once I get the first laugh, faster, right? And then I get the second and it just goes and it goes really, really fast. So I'm just like generating this, this energy that can keep me up and them up. Um, I, yeah, I still get nervous because that first three are like, it's tough, you know, and I, I'm a musician, so I like uh, timing, momentum. Like I, I, I keep a set pace in my head. What do you play? Uh, I play trombone. Yeah. Okay. We yeah. have another thing in common. Yeah. I yeah. I play trombone as well. For sure. Uh, yeah, I was. Yeah. Uh, all through middle school and then high school, it got a little different, and then I got kicked out my junior year Happens. for being an asshole. Mm. But hey, you know. Yeah. What are you gonna do? I was a junior in high school, and I was an asshole. You know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. They called it, you know. Uh, but yeah, now I played T-Bone for a long time. Picked up the uh, the set drums later mm-hmm. on in life. I can play that a little bit. Uh, but yeah, trombone, baby. T-Bone. Yeah, that was totally. I loved it. I love it when people like do this yeah. when they're making fun of a trombone playing. It's like, you've never fucking held a trombone. You don't even know what you're doing. Shit. Yeah. You're supposed to do you know? Yeah. <laughs> that one. You got to hit the thumb yeah. right here. You got to hit the thumb and the finger and hold it right. <laughs> Shut up. You still have a uh, trombone? No, nah, I actually plan on getting back into it and buying a new one. So, it, all right, look, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, after May May 15th, I think that was the day. After May 15th, I decided to get my life completely on track and, like, focus, right? And focus right. on me. So I started working out, started eating healthier. You know, I focused in on my comedy. It's gotten substantially better, at least in my opinion and the opinion of some others. Um, I'm a talented individual. My, my my family is talented, and I want to live up to that greatness that they put out. My mother is such a strong-headed, annoying woman, <laughs> and I love her so much, and she's so sweet. But God damn, dude, she, like, she just expects greatness from all of us. And, and the That's most what mothers do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's so loving and supportive, and, man, like, I really, really – I used to be a terrible person, and I, I can't wake up, and I have to wake up, and I'm just like, dude – just thank you for being an awesome mom and i take one day like just trying to push it and she so she says i'm too hard on myself but i just want i want her to be proud you know what i mean yeah so like that's a that's a big driving factor of my musicianship one and my comedy too yeah my wife is what helped turn me around for being kind of a piece of shit mm-hmm. you know i got a great mom don't you know don't get that yeah wrong. yeah but my wife like my wife is the one that turned me around. my wife and getting pregnant with jackson you know is what Oh, that's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, and it took it still took a long time, you know, for me to you know get to where I'm at now. But you but, started the process, man. But I was, I mean, I used to be a piece of work. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, you know, so. But yeah, now my wife has been, my wife has been my driving factor with most of the stuff. My wife and my children, mm-hmm. you know, making sure that they're taken care of and that my kids know what it looks like, you know, to be, you know, a a man, a husband, a father, you know. My daughter knows what it looks like to be loved by a man because she sees and treated what I, correctly. Yeah, do what with with her mom. Yeah, that's the big you know, one. My kids get to see that that's what you know. This is what it looks like. This is what all of it looks like. Mm-hmm. You know, and I try to like I try not to like we don't fight that much. And when we do, we apologize. And if we get mad at each other like out loud in front of the kids, we apologize in front of the kids out loud mm-hmm. so they see that shit. You know, like it's supposed to be done. Yeah, and you know we don't we. I mean, it ain't always been beer and Skittles. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Nothing you're is. human. Yeah. Yeah, you're uh, but we've definitely got, you know, we've been married for, uh, this is our 15th year, 15th anniversary is coming up in December. And, uh, you know, we've we've got, you know, roof over our head. Everything's good. and You're living good. You know, like I said, th- thanks to her, you know, I, uh, I'm a little more tame now. <laughs> you know, like, man, it, and it's funny, too, because people, you know, people fuck with me about, like, I uh, I don't I have no idea how much my paycheck is. 
Like, I know how much I make, but yeah. I don't know what my weekly check is. I don't look at it. It gets direct deposited, and my wife does whatever she does with it. All right, hold on. My wife gets her check, you know what I mean? And she it's direct deposit. She does whatever she I buy whatever I want whenever I want. Okay. And that's all I know. So you guys have an understanding. Yeah, if I want to buy something that's like, if I want to get something that's over probably $200, I tell her. Okay. Hey, I'm going to do this. And she's like, okay. Or hold on, wait till next Thursday. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Or let me move some money. You know, but yeah, no, I, whenever I relinquished, like, I don't give a fuck how much money, like, just here it is, spend it however you need to. It's been a low, I guarantee it's a lot easier for her because I'm not asking questions, you know what I mean? And I'm not like, like over her shoulder, like some people would be, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I got good credit. If we need a credit card, she tells me. If she can't get it, Bro I'll said apply. I got that you know what credit. I mean? Like, we, well, when we started our when we started our relationship, she's the one that had good credit, okay. and we lived off of her credit. And you know, that's how we started our life. But as people do, we fucking wrecked that shit. And I was able to have such a long distance of uh, not having anything like on my credit mm-hmm. uh, because we were living off of hers. Uh, that I was able to, you know, I guess start establishing some credit. And then my credit became good. We survived off of that until we were able to clean hers up. And then now, you know, we've got it set up where, you know, we're every, I know every paycheck money gets put, you know, into savings because I see the savings number go up. Is you this what, what I mean? marriage is now? It's what it is for me. Yeah. You know, my wife is a bookkeeper for the hospital anyway or an accountant for the hospital anyway. Uh, you so know, I should marry an accountant? Yeah, man. Look, man, if they're good at it, unless they're <laughs> crooks, you know, don't marry a Madoff, you know. I'll make sure I yeah. keep in mind. Yeah. So, but no, it works out great for us because, you know, again, like, <laughs> you know, there was a point in time where everything was jacked up. You know what I mean? Like we, we were struggling for money. Yeah, yeah. And, or we were struggling to keep things because we were spending money in weird spots. I'd buy some, she'd buy some. We didn't know how much money we had. It was all, you know, whatever. And then we finally just came together and, you know, made it all make sense. And I'm telling you, man, that woman inside, I'm, I'm a lucky motherfucker, man. I can't say enough about my wife. And, you know. Did you know that I heard that you're not supposed to date comedians? I wasn't a comedian when we met. <laughs> but like, I was a drummer, actually. I was a water man. That's what I've you know, yeah. mostly been. Like, I didn't know. It, and I looked up the re- I was like, why shouldn't you date comedians? And it's like, well, uh, they don't take stuff seriously. And I just, I couldn't help but make a joke at everyone. I was like. Don't take this seriously, and yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, dude, I yeah. love the shit. I do too. Yeah. Um, I try to wear this one for him whenever I podcast. Me just, too. I, I mean, try just, to go up and just stage so right. my my brother and sister can see it, you know, because they're the only two that watch. Also, believe it or not, Chris Luker is the actual last mentor. He is the third. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let that me is switch. so great. You wait, know wait, what? Wait, That's wait, been wait. this week's episode of the Terrible <laughs> Table Podcast. Everybody, wait, wait, go wait. ahead and end it here. Let it's me. been gross. Um, I'm not even going to put this episode out. All right, all right. Let me explain. apologize to everybody for the missing week. So there's there's Glenn Stewart, Clyde Williams, and Chris Luker, right? Right. And I I don't I don't all, understand. Let me let me no joking aside, mm-hmm. all three uh, strong and weak and different act aspects of what we've got going on here. Three really good mentors. Depend, exactly. Depending on what direction you are, you know. I guess watching them. Yeah, like that's what yeah. I mean. And I, I don't know. Maybe everyone calls me weird, and, and I don't care. You're weird. Don't worry about it. Yeah, like I just, I just see something. I see things differently, right? And so, like, when I when I see Glenn Stewart, I'm just like, okay, he's really, really execution. And like, if you're not funny, you're not funny. And there's no, well, you know, there's just not. And Clyde, I'm like, he he's telling me how to improve and where to improve. And he's like, yeah, it's not really funny, but and he'll. He'll help me go through it, and with Chris, like it's it's Tiki Bar, it's it's like the actual heart of Tiki. You know, he's he's been giving me the opportunities to go up and like, all right, well, you know, go do something, both be funny. Yeah. And so that's why I, I view them as a way. There's a secret fourth, and it's 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 Mark. It is because Mark yeah. knows how to make fun of people. Yeah. I think Mark is funnier when he's when he's flaming people than he is when he's actually you know writing his jokes. And that man, Mark, Mark and his crowd work is something. It's else. impeccable. It is something else. It is. I think if you if you were to put all four of those people together and like make a comedian, I think you'd have a super comedian. I really do. A super comedian yeah. with a really weird looking dick. Yeah, totally. Oof. Hey, well, all right, hold on. We have we have two whites, so you know it's 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 not going to be super, but it'll be there, right? And then yeah. we have. I don't think length and girth is going to be on their side. <laughs> 
And I'm not sure if it'd be circumcised or not. Man, this thing's, I feel like it would be. This thing's a train wreck, man. Yeah, this thing's a train wreck. No wonder you're a comedian. No wonder those four are a comedian, because that dick right there is never getting used. Holy shit. So, well, man, so, like, um, when we talked the other day, you know, you, you told me you're – you know, you have a four part plan and you told me one part of it and the rest yeah. of it was a secret. Um, is this what you want to do is comedy? Is this what you're going to pursue oh, totally, as absolutely. a career? Like I know we've talked about the day job that you have, mm. uh, which I won't mention unless you decide to I don't give a fuck. You um, I, I sell boots guys. I, sell, I measure. Boot, <laughs> I'm, he sells boots. And yeah. Cats I, and boots and cats and boots and cats I touch and people's boots. feet. And I was like, Hey, you're wearing Al, this wrong size. Al Bundy. Yeah, dude. Call me Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> dude. You know, he has a scene in a movie where he, he likes feet. And so Ugh. he, yeah, he's pretty, I mean. Fuck feet. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> he's weird. But he has a scene in a movie where uh, this character just so happens to be, you know, rubbing on some feet. And he personally wanted to play it himself. That's, uh, mm-hmm. what's the name of that movie? Um, I, I, I don't know. I do. It's that one where it's the vampires and it's. Uh, Why am I not surprised? I can't think of the name of that movie. It's like one of the first ones he did. What do you what do you think his wife is thinking? <laughs> what do you, oh yeah, no, yeah, you seem to enjoy yourself there, honey. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't know, dude. I just I, I think it's a little funny. I find peculiar things funny though. Yeah, I can respect yeah. that. So, but like this is what, you know, obviously you have your day job, but is this mm-hmm. what you're gonna try to pursue? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're definitely young enough to try to, you know, pursue it and make it happen. You know, is this where you want to be a comedian? This is it. So this could be like groundbreaking. Like, oh yeah, oh my God, the VH1s. Where are they now? Is yeah. reaching out, <laughs> wanting to get some footage of me and Garrett back in twenty twenty three. That's the plan. It is. I'm not gonna lie. I love Fuck it. Yeah, good. Yeah, go for it, man. It's a. Uh, are you gonna try to stay here, or are you gonna move? If I'm honest with you, I'm gonna move. Yeah, good. I'm gonna, that's I, smart. Shreveport isn't. It's yeah. all right. Look, I've had a lot of fun in Shreveport. Yeah, but there's too many people that I run into it that I just don't want to see anymore. You know, uh, and I'm okay. like, I'm just, I'm used to like picking up and going at this point. I've been doing it all my life. Yeah, no. So, you know, what's, what's a new different place to you like, Hey, my name's Garrett. So are you thinking Austin, like everybody else, or are you thinking something different? Missouri Nick probably. Th- really? Yeah. Missouri. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm old enough now where I can appreciate it. Like it's my state, you know, that's where Garrett started his safe file. That's where I, you know, that's pretty funny. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude, I've been writing a bit about gaming. I just don't know how to work it yet. I'll be honest with you. I've got so many bits. I don't know how to I, work. <laughs> I don't, yeah, it, isn't it, it just, infuriating? And what's well, I, it's fun because I actually figured out, there was one one bit that I always wanted to do, but I could never figure out how to do it. And I figured out that it's a like a secondary punchline to a, a different bit. Okay. So like I was able to finally figure out. Oh, I could put that here. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, no, you can try it. I tried it. It it worked. It kind of worked. Kind of worked. The other one was a bigger punch. So I think I was this the set that you when I lost uh, last saw you. Not probably. Not were you there Friday? The not this last Friday. Okay, no. so it was a lot. All right, yeah. That, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Dude, that set was great. Kudos that, to you. I think about half of it was personally. Yeah. You, you know, and James was, killed that shit. Well, I know that. Um, there was one joke that Clyde and Chris told me to tell, and I've told it before, uh, and it never works. It never works. Um, Can I be honest with you? Yeah. Whenever people people tell me to t- uh, say a joke, I I just forget it because I I don't. It's not a lot of a lot of stuff that other people find funny. It's just not fucking funny. Well, yeah, I tried it and it fucking like it it was, I looked at Chris and I was like, I "Told you, yeah. you know what I mean?" And it yeah, yeah it 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 bombed hard. But thinking about that one, I think I might actually have a place for that punchline, and it's not what it what you know what I mean. And that's yeah, yeah. one thing I'm still learning is like, just because I have something written down doesn't mean that it's the the center of the bit. It can be anything with anything else, mm-hmm. you know. And I've learned that a little little bits and little bits along the way, and I just I keep forgetting. And then there's times where it clicks, and it's like, oh yeah. You know, there's sometimes where, you know, like that, that fire department joke that I did, that good, one killed. Dude. That one was you awesome. Know, that one killed good. And I don't know. I want to try it a different way to see if it works any better that way. Um, I think it's a matter of like what I'm thinking is, is instead of saying I'm trying to figure out what to call them, I just stumble through figuring out what to call them. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I don't know which way would be better, so I'm going to try it the other way. Well, the stumbling through looks real, and it if you if you do happen to hit, you know, during the stumble, that's pretty gas too, and that's another laugh. Well, but the thing is, is like I I stated that I was trying to figure out, yeah. and then stumbled through. You have to do one, or like the way I want to try it is just instead of saying I'm trying to figure out what to call them, just be like you know, hey, blah blah blah, you mm-hmm. know, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of instead of saying that I'm trying to figure it out, figure it out. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to say. So, but yeah, no, it's uh I'm still learning a lot, you know, and I have my, my moments where I'm like, man, I don't fucking want to do this shit no more. You know, I feel like because we only have one open mic, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like there's just there's not a lot of opportunity. I wanna I wanna get more comedy opportunities here in Shreveport because there are genuinely funny people here. Man, it's been difficult, you know. I uh, and you know, again, maybe if we were all, if we all put our minds to it and we mm-hmm. can focus, you know, because um, I, I got the, I started the, um, the one down at the Missing Link. Like I talked to, I met the owner yeah. tr- with my day job, and I asked him, "Hey, you guys ever want to do comedy?" He said, "Yeah, we'd love to." And we did one, and you know, put it together. And then my dad had a stroke. And yeah. Glenn, fortunately, Glenn enjoyed doing it down there, and he took over, and he was the one that kept that show going. Yeah, I don't know when the last time there was one done or when the next one is, but I know for a while that was a good spot for it. But it was only like monthly, mm-hmm. you know. And we definitely need another spot or two That's to be two. able to try to do comedy on different nights. But is there is there enough people here that are going to come? watch us so we can figure out if our jokes yeah, are funny dude. or not. Yes, yes. Because I've been to L O L back when we were first, you know, back in twenty eighteen when it was still like it had been open for a little while, but it was still semi new. And open mic nights on Thursdays were horrific. There was the comics and maybe four or five people. I think the most I ever saw was like eight. Believe it or not, that's where like I first got on stage at LOL. Yeah, I, I was. Was drunk. it in front of anybody? Yeah, I mean, okay, so there was like three people there and my ex girlfriend. Yeah. You know, because she was, you know, she was support, and I, I got up stage and I was drunk. You know, when you do that drunk rambling that you think you're funny. Yes. Yeah, I did that, and yeah. like I just every time now I, I'm just like, oh, dude, it's okay, it's the first time, just get it over with. You know, it's it's like bad sex. It's you know just. Yeah. It's still. I mean, I still came. Yeah, you know, you still get there, yeah, but I still busted. But <laughs> you know, it didn't suck. I mean, whatever. It was on her back. I don't yeah. care. Um, you know, we used to do it at Bears, and Bears was always a good crowd. You know, that show that Molly and mm-hmm. um, uh, Tamachio put on. I don't know if you've met. They they don't do comedy anymore. I don't. Think. I, I've been to Bears a couple of times. Well, I'm talking about uh, Molly Hires and Tony Tamachio. Tony Tamachio uh, was a comic here. And uh, I like Tony. I had a friend of mine that, you know, he... Is, is he happened to be, like, long-haired, Hispanic? No. Okay, I was thinking about a different White Tony. dude, like Opie. Yeah. You know, o- is he paste, uh, Is he ghastly? <laughs> little bitty guy. I like Tony. Tony's the it, shit, but he's a drummer. Okay, okay. And the band that he was in, I believe it's him and his sister. She's, like, the front face and the singer or whatever. Okay. Uh, they have found success with their music, so he stopped doing comedy. Yeah. And Molly, uh, she has stopped doing comedy and found, you know... You know herself as an individual. I don't. I don't think she does comedy at all. Anymore. Okay. I believe she got. I believe she got married today. On it was on Facebook yesterday or today. Well, you know. You know. Congratulations, if you happen Molly. to see this, yeah. congratulations. I suppose. I don't think anybody here locally supports us. If you do, I dare you to leave a comment down at the yeah, bottom. Yeah, dude. Look, look. There's some great people here trying to do some yeah. great things. Be that guy. All right. Just, just. Yeah. It's. It doesn't hurt to just you know leave a little more down there in the comment section. That's right. Well. You know, like I said, I try to keep these about 45, 30, 45 minutes or so. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're we're touching on that time. So uh, is there anything that you want to say? Um, is there any question you got for me? Um, well, you know, I just want to say, hey, if you liked it, uh, Garrett Nelson's a name um, links on Facebook. Of the, links of everything will be. Yeah. I'll make sure I get that from just, you. Just, uh, you know, go out. Go see if something's funny. If you like it, don't be strange. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of good stuff here. Uh, and also, thank you. I really appreciate it. Absolutely welcome. Had a great time. Yeah, no, like I said, this this show will definitely not make you famous, but it lets mm-hmm. me, it lets me get to know you. Oh, totally. And that's what you know. That's kind of kind of why I do it. Um, but yeah, no, I've enjoyed. You know, I, I will say that the the first time I met you, I was like, he's a firecracker. You know, because <laughs> you were all over the place that first night I met you, dude. I just like having a fun time, man. Um, I remember you were. 
I think you were talking. That was that night. There was this fat dude up there that was talking about somebody's shoes, and his shoes were like exploding because he weighed so much. And uh, I remember you. Be, I remember you being all over the place. And I remember telling Chris like, "Oh, he's a firecracker." So, and I don't know if if me and you talked or not, but when they put so that show that you did two weeks ago, mm-hmm. um, I saw that you were on the show, and I was like, "Fucking hey, you know, congratulations." And then I saw the picture that they posted after the show, and it had that other guy. There's another black dude that was on stage that wasn't you Mm -hmm. that I'm not really familiar with either. I don't really know his name. And I thought, shit, I don't know who Garrett Nelson is. (laughs) And then I was talking to somebody about it. I think it was Clyde. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I thought I knew who Garrett was because he was talking about you. And I I thought he was talking about the other guy. And I was like, yeah, I thought I knew who Garrett was, but – you know, come to find out it's this other guy, and he was like, really? And I was like, yeah, and I typed your name in, and when your face popped up, I was like, all right, now I'm officially fucking confused. <laughs> I was like, because this is who I thought it was. Yeah. You know, and then I showed him the picture. He was like, no, that guy wasn't there. He was just, you left early. And I was like, oh, okay. So I felt I felt like an idiot because no, you're I, good, knew you, I thought I knew you. I didn't think I knew you, and then I realized I knew you. I'm the one black man named Garrett. Like it's it's spelled like security, you know, like yeah. Garrett Security, both ours, but yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's me. I only know one other Garrett, and that's my boy. What's up, G Money? <laughs> you know what's up? I know you're not gonna watch this either, but you're my you're my boy, Slew. So, but well, y'all come down and see us at uh, Tiki Bar on Fridays for sure, dude. Every Friday, yeah, every single. Make Friday. sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you're local and you're watching us. Don't be a loser, dude. Yeah, if you want to come on and talk to me about nothing like me and him did, then come on. We're shooting the shit, man. Uh, that's all we do, you know. <laughs> well, man, that's been this week's episode of the Terrible Table Podcast. Y'all, please come out and see us. Um, like, subscribe, hit Garrett up on his social yeah, medias. Dude. Uh, he is a um, an up and coming comic, and I hope that. Uh, a, we can have you on here many, many times, um, and B, that we can watch you, you know, grow and flourish, and hopefully you're, you know, opening for Mark here soon as Mark's starting to sell out stuff. Dude, Mark's going crazy. I honestly, I, I want to get to the point where like, oh yeah, you got it for yeah. sure, for sure. All right, thanks you guys. We'll see y'all next.